Welcome to YouTube. I have a guest on this video, but first let's talk about what the video is before we talk about the guest. So, today's video, as you can tell, is being live streamed because again we have the Twitch thing in the top left. We are going to be doing, uh, going through all of my binders. Uh, I did do this on my YouTube channel, I want to say like uh, beginning of this year, maybe like middle of last year. Um, but this is a full on update because since then I've got a job. And because of that, my debt collection has grown substantially since then. So we're going to be doing that. So, and then the guest is Khajiit Cook. You're more like a hoarder than a collector if I have to have an opinion on it. And that's it. <laughs> so, let's get into this. So we're going to go to this tab. And as you can see, it doesn't all fit on the fucking screen. So I'm gonna have to fucking move. Oh god. Hang on. They're heavy, they're heavy, they're heavy. Oh. Let's show your common bulk as well. Let's no, I'm not going through the bulk. Fuck that. That would actually take all day. It's not a collection if you don't show all of the ten stones. No, I'm not going through that because that's technically not a collection. That's just if I need it later on. I'm not classing that as a collection. Hell no. You, you don't know. There, there might be a $100 common card in there. You don't know about that. Well, that's a shame that I'm never going to know that, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Welcome! So we're going to go through, out of all of them, the smallest of the binders first. And as you can tell by the fact that it was heavy by hitting the table, you know we're in for a wild ride tonight. So, I will be opening it. And here we go. So, this is what I call my, um, my, like, I can't think of the right word. So basically this is the binder full of cards that go into multiple decks. So stuff like my Armageddon Knights, my Blackjack. My Ash Blossoms, uh, Artifact Scythe. All of my cards are in alphabetical order, my tie ad, because I'm a fucking I, I, weirdo. I have a name for it, it's called a staple binder. Ah, there you go, staple binder. Uh, we've then got like the Blue Mountain for the Warrior plays, we've got like the Leveneers, we've got the Cyber Steins, we've got Dark Arms Dragon, because I see it's actually kind of good in some decks, like Phantom Knights is the main one that I use it in. Spoiler, I know. Yeah. So then we've got all of these, including like the Dimension Shifter for like banishing plays. We've got the Pankratops. We've got the uh, Buster Sword because obviously that's legal still. Don't ask. Uh, we've got ourselves a like obviously our hand trap stuff. So like uh, Fet Vader, Droll, uh, Phantasma, and all of that. There we go on. This space is where I used to have um, two sets of uh, Parallax Eve because there's six here and then there was three here because you can't put nine in one single slot because that kind of breaks the binder. But I traded one of my play sets away because I didn't need the nine to be fair. And I've yet to either fill that slot or move in one slot back. So the slot is filled that way. Next we go into stuff like our perform ages, our, uh, our predator plant engine. Got scrap raptors, mostly for dinos, obviously, but if there's a deck that can use it other than that, then obviously you want to run out with our scrap recyclers. We've got our Sheehan Squire, we've got all this, that, and the other. We've got our silent anglers. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> so we've got Skullmeisters, uh, Summon Amongst, Tour Guides. As you can see with the Tour Guides, is what I was talking about with like the um, Parallel Exceed. Uh, I had, because I've got so many tour guides in uh, Max Gold, I had to separate them. There's nine co copies here. There's three play sets worth, because I've got, as I said, 68 decks, so three play sets is definitely worth having. I'll see our True King Lithogasm. I've only got two. I'm, I'm trying to get a third one uh, of this rarity, but it is what it is. And I, as probably a proof, probably like, uh, focused on, we've got the Yajiro Invaders, because, oh fuck, he's coming. Uh, <laughs> I do want to make a deck with him. I just need to work out what deck I'm going to put him in. But that's not appropriate for Twitch. <laughs> then we have that the Chaos Dragon Twitch Engine. Twitch, well, which about him. the tiny Chaos Dragon Engine. I still need to get the Chaos Spaces, but they're like ten pound a copy at the moment. Then we obviously got the Gen X Engine. We've got the Dragoon Engine. Uh, we skip over. We have our Invoked Engine, and we have our Codebreaker Engine. Again, this is staple stuff that you can run in multiple decks, so it's in here. Next, we go into the staple spells and traps. 
We've got our books, we've got our allures, we've got our burials from different dimensions, cool buys, uh, obviously card of the mind, we've got our cauldrons, our card destructions, our cosmic cyclones, our dark ruler no mores, you know. Uh, obviously stuff that are like floodgate so like time, uh, dimensional fissure. Uh, we've got our double summon, we've got our uh, foolish burials, we've got our uh, emergency tellies, we've got our double and nothing because obviously you can run the rank 4 utopia double engine in multiple decks. As long as you can make rank 4 you can make that entire engine, it's quite nice. Obviously our harpy feathers which I've got two of them to go ones because best rarity for it and also it, you, again it's one of those cards that you might run in multiple decks at the same time. We've got our heavy storms, we've got our hate true nades less less good but it is what it is we might be able to play it against like i don't know amazement or some shit uh we've got our ignite reloads because obviously i play a lot of pendulum so that's actually two play sets worth in there we've got our instant fusions we've got our machine dupes mind controls living fossils again two play sets worth um we've got our monster reborns we've got our moray of breeds two play sets we've got our mystic mind we've got our one for ones our poly two play sets and then we've got all of our pots uh, two play sets of um, uh, Pot of Avarice, two play sets of Pot of Desires, one play set of Acquisitiveness, one Duality, one Extravagance because they went straight back up after I bought this play set. Uh, this play set cost me, uh, I want to say £40 for the entire play set, so like uh, £15 at the time. Um, but then, obviously, they shot back up to being about 40 quid a copy, so I'm not getting another play set for a while. We've got our uh, Power Bonds, our double play set of Psychic Eraser Laser, obviously still out stuff like Dragoon. We've got our Regeki, we've got um, our Rank Up Magic Baryon's Force. As stupid as it sounds, it actually runs in multiple of my decks I play. I play Paleo Frogs where I run this, Ojama where I play this. It has a use in a few decks. We have our Reasonings, we have our Rotors. Then obviously Salvage, Scapegoat, Set Rotation, Super Poly, obviously there's like two play sets in there. You'd be dumb not to. Salvage I've got two play sets of because I've got multiple water decks. We've got our Symbol of Heritage play set because as long... I know a lot of decks can't play it to its usefulness, but it can be used in Warrior Link to be the equip that you send. Plus also a lot of Warrior decks can send all three copies of their card to the grave. And then if you have it in hand, you can still rebirth like say a Stratos that you've used three times. We've got our Terraformings, we've got our Ties of the Brethren, we've got our, uh, I think it's like, that's like uh, two playsets of uh, Twin Twisters, might be three playsets, not sure. I'm hoping it's two because I'm always going to break the binder. Uh, we've got our Wear Off Sales, our Upstart Goblins, our uh, World Legacies, and then we go into the traps, we've got stuff like our Floodgates in the sense of like anti-spell fragrance, we've got Compulsory Escape Device because, haha, <laughs> fuck you Magnus, and we've got our Compulsory Evacuation Device. Bought that just for me. I did. It was hilarious because I resolved it once. You're like, oh, you bitch. <laughs> uh, we've got our crackdowns, uh, dimensional barriers, which are good against literally any pendulum player. <laughs> it, it literally ends their entire career because you just go pendulum. Because like everyone, like yeah, it just it just kills like every pendulum deck. We've got our punishments. We've got our evenlies, which. I got the playset finally. I've been looking for a playset of this for ages, and finally I got a reprint and goes from the past. So I got it for like 30 quid for the playset, which is quite nice. Obviously, we've got our other floodgates in the sense of goes and match. We've got Fiendish Chain because it's funny. Heavy Storm Dusters, I think I've got two playsets for that. Our Imperial Warder, I've only got the one. I might get two because obviously it's a decent floodgate. Uh, our Infinite Impermanence, if it weren't so expensive, I would have two playsets for that, but I've only got the one at the moment. Got to lose one turn, so our Lost Worlds, Double Macro Cosmos, Metaverses, Mind Drains, you know. All of these Floodgates, uh, which is because I play stuff like Pacifist and uh, Cleefort. Uh, we've got our uh, Red Reboots. If I go against another fucking deck that uh, does like Floodgates and shit, I can go lol no. We've got our Skill Drains, we've got our Royal uh, Prisons, we've got our, our Solemn Engine, which is on two separate pages, which I don't like, which is obviously like the Judgment the strikes and then the warnings we've got the summon limit for more floodgates storming mirror force because decks like uh, abyss actors can abuse it and then we go even further and we go into stuff like wall of disruption which is a funny and then like waking the dragon and whatnot and that's it for the smallest binder so with the smallest binder we've been able to go through everything in that sense so now we're actually going to go into the decks itself Okay, so we're going to not go into the extra deck binder yet. We're going to go straight into one of the deck binders. We're going to go into the smallest of the deck binders, which, as you, again, as you can tell by the noise it made, 
is not a fucking tiny one. Uh, what I am going to do though is so this doesn't fucking go flying because it's been overfilled. Oh my god, it's been overfilled so fucking much. Oh, I've got to be so careful because I don't want it fucking going on my play mat. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. That's what she said, everything that you're saying right now. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go, I've got my coffee. It's like right on the rim, so I didn't really want to deal with it in that sense. So let's open this binder. This one, I'm going to have to move further. This is literally, oh my god. That's another name. You just put a whole bunch of stuff over that's what she said moment. Imagine like a fucking child, yo. Just continue. That's what he said. Right. So, we're going to go in two. First thing you see is the most degenerate thing already. We've got our shadows at the front of this binder. Uh, and as you can see, we've got the entire core except stuff like Schism. We've even got the Nef Shadal Fusion, which is a decent equip, to be fair. So what I what I do with decks, and I feel like I have to put this out there before we go any further, is decks that have synergy together, um, but only really have synergy of like one or two decks. I tend to still put them in the big binder, but then I put the decks that they have synergy with next to them. So, for example, all of my Pendulum decks are in this binder, and they're all, like, right next to each other in case I want to share, like, say, an Abyss Actor, Curtain Razor, into Dynamist. So, we've got our... I put Shadol here, because even though it's very minute, you do have the two uh, Pendulums here. So, they they technically Pendulum. So, we've got ourselves that. We've got ourselves the uh, Dynamist Plesios and whatnot, Dynamist deck. Followed immediately by a Morphage, which is one of the worst decks I own. Like, holy shit. It's fun, but oh, you cannot make anything with this deck. That's the problem. And we go straight from the terrible Pendulum deck to what people call the best Pendulum deck, which is Pendulum Magicians, including like our um, Skull Crobats, our Tuning Magicians, our Double Irises. I've even got banned cards in here, like uh, Astrograph. So if it ever does come back, I can immediately play it. Um, I think I've, the only card that I don't have when it came off the ban list was a uh, Skull Crowbat. So that, that that's how much I like to prepare. I wasn't ever expecting Skull Crowbat to come back, to be fair. And then straight after Pendle Magician, we have the Abyss Actors, which obviously is good because uh, Curtain Razor tends to be a card you run in Pendle Magician. Um, and we go through all of that, which is quite nice. And then straight after that, you look at it and you're like, oh, it's an Exodia deck. That's the end of his Pendulum decks, isn't it? Nope, you run a Pendulum Engine in this Exodia deck, which is a Heart of the Underdog version. So the Pendulums are so you can get massive monsters onto the board constantly while trying to get the Heart of the Underdog to go off while you're using the Reload. And then because you're Pendulum summoning so much, you can get something like Steel Ogre Grotto out. And Steel Ogre Grotto being a level 5 machine allows you to go into Nova and Infinity in this deck. And you're able to make loads of... You, you can even make like a Boral Sword and whatnot in there. So it's... The extra deck really makes this, but it's still playable, and it's technically a Pendulum deck because the amount of Pendulums I play in it. And then straight next to it, Cleefort. My very first ever Pendulum deck. It's uh, Floodgate heavy, not going to lie, but it's the very first Pendulum deck I ever made. Um, not IRL, because I built this like a month ago, but on like uh, Legacy of the Duelist, it was the first ever Pendulum I ever made. And holy shit was it worth it. I fucking love this deck. Um... It's not knockoff super quants, it's better super quant because it's actually consistent. And then we go straight into the metal phase. I kick your butt with my super quants all the time and then you like that. Like you say that, but how many times do I beat your butt because I go recreate and you're like, shit, <laughs> I can't use blue layer. Yeah, I play around that, I play around that. It doesn't recreate, it doesn't recreate the card that just like something. And no, it stops level 4 of blows when they're normal and level 5 and above when they're special. But then don't forget, I'm also running over full of gates like lose one turn and that, which also fuck you over. That, that card does kind of... So then we have our metal foes, which... You're, gonna, you're not going to believe what deck comes after this. And I'll give you a hint. The only reason it comes after this is because of the Metal Force Fusion. We're done with Pendulum completely now. Metal Force Fusion is the la is Wait, the card that's in common. Yeah. I know what it is. I know what it is. It's uh... Never mind. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sky Striker. Because you can for like Forest Burial Goods, the um, uh, Metal Force Fusion and whatnot. But obviously, we now have Engag. 
back. So in gag makes this deck really good again. Uh, obviously, as you can see, I've got the entire core again, including weird like cards that you wouldn't think putting here, like Herald of the Abyss. But I've heard it's actually kind of decent in the deck, so I've put it there ready, so I don't, won't play it in anything else. Then we go into, this looks like a mishmash, because it kind of is. We've got our Appliancer, and it's straight, because there was nothing to put Appliancer next to, and there's not really anything you could put next to Sky Striker. So I went straight into Appliancer, and then Appliancer, again, nothing to put next to it. So I went straight into Pacifist, and because Pacifist uses Fossil Dig, straight after that is my Dino. Now, Dino isn't complete yet. I still need to get the Arch Swords, I still need to get the Giant Rexes and whatnot, so this is still being worked on. But right next to it... Oh no. You're, you're murdering right. people's dreams. <laughs> And then straight after the dinos, it the, the reason I've put these two together, dinos and then zombies, is because their structure decks came out at the exact same time. Dinos got a lot more play, obviously because they became meta for a long time, but then zombies were sort of pushed to the sideline, but I would argue zombies are the better deck, personally. I think zombies, if you play it correctly, can beat dinosaur quite quickly. So zombies, in my opinion, is best deck. And then we flip and we see more zombie stuff. We've even got, and I'm quite happy with this, we've got the original printing of Red Eye Zombie Dragon Ultra. It's fucking beautiful. I love it. And then after it, again, you wouldn't understand the synergy, but if I tell you what the synergy is, you'll be like, holy shit. We have Kenyu. Now, the reason Tenyi next to Zombies is great is because Adhara. Adhara alone makes their synergy kind of work. You run Adhara in Zombies because A, it's a starter, because it gets you a free body on board at any time. Plus, also this, plus a Mezuki or a Gozuki, becomes Nat Beast. And you can run Nat Beast in Zombies where you're already controlling them with Rivalry and Zombie World and Belladrotch. It's fucking insane. I love I, I love zombies so much. I could talk about these all day. I fucking love the deck. And then straight after Tenyi, we go into Zodiac. Because again, no synergy, but it is what it is. So here's our Zoo core. Uh, we've even got, as you can see, Barrage. But we actually have double Barrage. Uh, again, if it ever like comes off the list a bit more. But obviously, because Dryden just got hit, I doubt it. But it is what it is. Then we go straight into Battling Boxer. <laughs> This 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 bind is all over the place. So with Battling Boxer, I I was planning on building it anyway, and then Simo like used it to take down Dragon Rolls. I was like, okay, this is the kick in the ass. I need to actually build this. So I built Battling Boxer, and then right next to it, Heroes. It looks like Destiny Heroes, but if you flip, it's actually me slowly building Omni Heroes. Uh, I've even got the Dark Calling ready for when I do get the Evil Hero stuff. I've got. I, all I need is Liquid Soldier, Evil Hero stuff, and uh, there's one other thing I was missing. Oh, the Vision Hero Faris and the Increase. But again, I have the Vi on already. So, yeah. And then that's it for this binder. As I said, this is the smallest one because this is the incomplete binder. Yeah. Uh, which. you guys are a philanthropist and you have extra money. Uh, you get rich here. Uh, the hero stuff, he's slowly been wanting to build it, and it's taking him forever, and he really wants it. I mean, it's what it is, I mean... Because once I build heroes, I might try to max rarity it, so... Right, uh, I'm going to drink a bit more coffee, because I've got to feel like... I feel like this next one's going to make my coffee spill a bit. Ugh. This is a completely filled binder. Every slot in this binder is filled. So this fucker's heavy. Uh, because as you've noticed, I run multiple copies of the same card in the same slot because then it saves room, but also makes it heavier because of it. So we have this binder, which is, starts with super heavy. Ironically, <laughs> it's one of my favorite decks of all time. Um, I built this, I wanna say half a year after I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh again in 2016. And I just love the playstyle. Just attacking from defense position got, like, got me hooked instantly. And then it's a monster card only deck. 
And then it's a monster card only deck that attacks from defense that also makes it so it's impossible to move the card sometimes. Yeah, it, it's it's a really fun play style for me. And as you can see, we've got the one Berserker Soul because haha, <laughs> Stealth Ninja attack directly, Berserker Soul for game. Uh, we have the Gradle Core. And the reason we've got the Gradle Core here is right next to it, we've got the Kaiju Core. Now, the reason we've done it this way, well, I've done it this way, is because obviously you run Jizakuru in Super Heavy. But you also run uh, Kaiju in Gradles. Now, I could put Gradles on the other side of Kaijus, but if I flip again, we have our Relinquish deck. And obviously, Relinquish Kaiju is a bigger thing that I build more than Gradle Kaiju. So I decided to do it that way because the Gradle core is so small, you can technically still have them both on the same page. It, it still makes sense to me. And then obviously, straight after the Relinquish deck, we have our Necros. Because Ritual, this is where all my Ritual decks now lie. Woohoo! Every binder has their own little story. Uh, so then after Relinc uh, the Necros is, we've got our incantations to help play uh, Necros. You don't run incantation in Relinquish because obviously you're running a Kaiju engine. But you do run it in Necros and you also run it in Megalith. <laughs> This is the end of the Ritual decks, but I think it's a decent end because obviously Megalith was actually uh, seen to potentially be meta at one point. Because how much they spam the board. Next we go into Fluffle, another deck from my past that I call one of my nostalgia decks. Because again, this is what this is actually the first ever deck I built that wasn't with a structure deck. Straight up, like IRL, first ever deck I built that wasn't a structure deck was Fluffle. Because I went from zombies when I was a kid, when I bought the Zombie World Structure Deck. And then I went, I left the game until about 2016. Came back, played a bit of zombies until the Ancient Gear Structure came out, which wasn't that long after. Played Ancient Gears, which was then a structure. And then I slowly built up my Fluffle Deck. And then I had Fluffles. And this is the very first packed deck rather than a Structure Deck deck. So it, it holds a place in my heart for that reason. That's why even though there's like 600 of the fuckers, I have every single Fluffle card out there. Um, then straight after, we've got our Salad. Now this is a deck I actually built recently, but I had to move st shit around to get Tenyi next to um, Zombies. So Salad actually ended up being moved to this binder. Because to be fair, Salad didn't really have any uh, correspondence with any deck anyway. So yeah. We I know you don't. I have a and when somebody has a turn that's longer than twenty minutes, I want to kill my This only takes about eight minutes. I mean it's still eight minutes, but I, well it depends on how good your combo is. But yeah, with um Mirage Salio, this deck's really good again. That's the funny thing. I built Sky Strikers back in like I think it's like March, just after the uh, ban list dropped in March. So I built Sky Strikers before we got engaged, and I built Salad literally a week before the next ban list dropped. So I I built two powerful decks from the Eternal format before they got their cards back. But after the ban list before that though. So literally within the ban list season, I built two really strong decks and then got the card that made them strong again. So I love it. Um, obviously we've got stuff like Cyanet Mining and that in here. Uh, because I don't have any other Cyburst decks, stuff like Cyanet Mining, even though it's technically uh, generic for like Cyburst, I don't have a Cyburst deck, any other Cyburst deck, so it's pointless putting it in the generic binder. Uh, so obviously we've got like Flame Buffalo and Lady Debug as well. Then we go into Unchained, one of my favourite decks of all time too. I have a lot of favourite decks, I'm not going to lie. Uh, because I, I build decks because of their playstyle rather than how good they are. So when they end up being good, as well as me liking their playstyle, hell yeah, I love the deck. So we've got Unchained, which is a good playstyle, and it actually is quite a good deck. Especially if you build like a sort of trap variant, but with like trap trick and whatnot. And then, as you can see, we've got Sonic Duck and Acrobat Monkey. Because they're level 3 vanillas that you can run in Burning Abyss. They're what I call the meme cards because like you don't really normal summon with a stack that much so you might as well make your normal summon a fucking vanilla sonic duck uh, 
So yeah, I play I play pure fat, uh, pure uh, burning abyss. I don't play PK fire. I I don't really like that deck. I don't find it that fun. But in case I ever do want to play it, right next to it we have PK, which might I add is very close to max rarity at this point. I have I, all I'm missing for max rarity is rare uh, swords. Uh, Starlight Torn Scales, but I do have Secrets, and to be fair, getting Starlight is just the biggest flex in the world, so I don't think I will be doing that. Um, and I think, like, the extra deck stuff, like an ulti Requiem and ulti Dark uh, Rebellion. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, and Secret Rare Break Souls, because I have Ultras. But, yeah, I'm quite close to Max Rarity Phantom Knights already. And then we have Arcana Force afterwards. This is... So this is a deck I've built because I liked the playstyle back when I was a little kid, but I never really had a chance to build them. So I thought, fuck it, I'll build it now that I'm a full grown adult that's playing a children's card game. And then straight after it is Weather Painters, because what I've decided to do is group all of my fairy decks together. I'll see Fluffle technically counts as a fairy deck, but you don't run any fairy support for uh, Fluffles because you just run it for like fusion. So even though they technically should be together, they're not. So then we go into Weather Painters because they're all fairies. Straight after that is Super Quants. Sure, Super Quants aren't majorly uh, fairies, but you do have the Alpha and the White Layer, which does make it so if you want to run a fairy engine, you can, and it actually is quite good. So if I ever do get like a Divine of the Heralds, for example. Then past Super Quants, we actually have Counter Fairy itself. Which... Who cares about counter fairy? Super quant. Super quant's ain't best deck. Nah, far from it. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, but are super quant yeah. zombies? If not, then they are not best deck. Yeah, super quant fairy talk recently. Just zombies talk recently. Hmm. No, zombies don't need to talk. They just need to fucking hold down any other. It's an anti meta deck. In the sense of, Sonic could top and then zombies would kill anything that tops pretty much. Like, even Salad dies to zombies. Because you don't have cybers, you can't go into like bailings. Like yeah, zombies kills a lot of decks. Like it's not like I'm not going to say it's a great deck and it'll be top of the meta soon because it's a massive anti-meta deck, but it's it's definitely top rogue in my opinion. So then we skip along past counter fairy to prediction princess because another fairy deck. So, if you've been keeping count on the decks, I think we're about 30 in at this point. 30 odd decks in at this point. Because then we go straight into the Ice Barriers from the structure deck. And after Ice Barriers, ooh, after Ice Barriers, we go to Prank Kids. And after Prank Kids, we go to Spiders. Best deck ever, best deck ever. Fuck Zombies, fuck Super Quant, Spiders. Describe the spiders. <laughs> how, how, tell us about the play style. I, I, I don't know. I've never built a successful version of spiders. I just got them. So it's A, another deck. And B, I can say if spiders ever get a good support card, I've got spiders. I don't fucking know. We've got insectors. Well, they have a really, they have a really good intro monsters. Spiders don't have a good way of getting it out. So, I, I'm going to say something slightly controversial, slightly not. I got Insectors before even the creator card was announced, right? So it weren't because of progression series, it weren't because of any of that. I just built Insectors, right? But these cards are more expensive than they're fucking worth. 100%. This deck is not good. I like playing it, but the deck is nowhere near good nowadays. And it still sets you back about £100 for the entire core. It's not worth the money. It is not worth the money. I swear this deck is... Although I will say I like the fact that you've got an ulti trap that's really cheap and then the um, excess stags are quite cheap as well for the ultis. And also we've got our Battle Wasp, uh, Speed Droid, Wind Witch deck I play for the finale. So that's one full binder. Oh, let's move this fuck up. We're going through yet another full binder of decks. Oh my god. Whew. 
it's slowly getting there but obviously like three archetypes come out every three months so unless i get an archetype like two archetypes every month i'm not even going to start catching up so here we are we're at ojama as our very first one which is kind of funny uh i like the fact we got the reprint of ojama country though i still don't like the fact that it, uh ojama country has that uh misprint though like they 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 didn't fix it same with gear town they reprinted gear town but they didn't fix it uh so then we got our sun avalon uh i am missing the new support for sun avalon which is literally like what one main deck two extra deck so i am missing that then we've got a Romage. Because fuck it, a Romage. <laughs> then Nordex, because again, fuck it. That's one thing I don't get. In the Legendary Heroes deck, right? A, Nordics are in it, which doesn't make sense because not really any of them are warriors except fucking Tia here. So it doesn't make sense to me in that sense. But it also doesn't make sense that it has every single Nordic card up to that point, except, except Odin's Eye. Odin's Eye is the only missing card from that set. I have to buy that fucker separately. Then afterwards we've got... Yeah, it's not in the, it's not in the thing. I have to buy these commons separate. Then we have... I don't know if it is right, but I think I have max rarity Thunder Dragons here, except obviously the ultimate rare uh, Thunder Dragon uh, Colossus. Because we've got like the Super Solars, the Secret Denko Sekers, the Ultra Thunder Dragon, the Super Aloof. And then we've got like Prismatics, an Ultra, Prismatic, Super, Ultra. I think this is close to max rarity if, you, if I get the ulti Colossuses, which is quite nice. Uh, obviously you can't play Colossus now anyway but I do want the ultis anyway so if Colossus ever comes back even at one hell yeah I'm prepared to play a max rarity then we've got our trick stars which I do have technically max rarity because uh, I've got the ulti Lycrises which if I take them out we actually have the ultimate rares which is uh, really nice I've got these for cheap as well uh, I have a mate who lives near me who when a uh, light stage got here, they didn't want to play the deck anymore because obviously it's not that consistent anymore. And he was a very big trick star player. He had like ulti like rest, he had all of that. He, he, he loved the deck, he played it with pretty much any combo you could run it with, even the Sky Striker engine. Uh, but when like that got here, he didn't want it anymore. So I bought it off him for like 50 pound and that included the three ultis, which meant the ultis came to about what? uh 10 pound a copy so yeah even now they're like 20 pound a copy which is quite nice so i've definitely plussed off of that i'm never gonna sell them but i've definitely plussed uh straight after that we've got what i'm gonna call the rocket deck because even though technically it's dragon link dragon link is dead without certain cards now because obviously lp's gone so this is more just rockets i'm gonna call it um and straight after rockets we have dragon maid because dragon maid shares cards with rockets aka tempest and red <laughs> red eyes Ooh. and after dragon maids we have altergeist because i hate my opponents and as you can tell by these two although the light's hitting it we've got a ronin toad in and a dupe frog pedio frog ribbit ribbit and after I will say one thing about you is like you 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 hate going against control and you have no control the biggest hypocrite I know. Oh I know, I know. But I don't call it I don't call it hypocrite, to be fair. I find it as people can enjoy playing something while not playing against it. It's not really being a hypocrite, it's just knowing that it's fun to actually be piloting it while it's not fun to be the one trying to break it. So it's not really hypocritical, it's more I don't want to break a control board while I would love setting them up. Now we skip past Paleo Frog into Mech Knight. This is where another Invoked Engine would obviously work. So that's why Invoked goes into the Gen I Splashable Binder, because you can run it in Mech Knights, obviously. Then after Mech Knights, we have Goki. And then straight after Goki, we have War Rock. I don't have the new Warrock stuff though, I do need to pick that up. But we have Goki Warrock, which actually isn't a bad build. Like, I would say it's better than pure Goki. 
it definitely is better than pure Goki. But I wouldn't say that. Yeah, Goki War Rock is better than pure Goki because it gives you so much more to open with. Like if you have Mountain, if you have Mountain in hand, you are immediately able to War Rock play. If you have a like say Gaktos and Farota, you've got War Rock plays. But for Goki itself, you have to have Suprex or a way into Suprex. So it opens the avenue so much more. So it does. I would say it's better together. Then we've got our Ancient Gears, including an Elemental Hero Prisma, because because Prisma target Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem. Send Ancient Gear Golem. Activate Ancient Gear Fusion. Go into Chaos Giant. It's a it's a two card combo that works a lot more than you think, especially if you run like a rota in the deck. That's actually a good combo. I've, I've done it a few times against people and they've gone, that fucking works. Oh. Yeah, it's a good combo. Again, reprint of Gear Town, but again they didn't fix the mistiming issue. It's not like Gear Town would be fucking OP if it didn't miss timing at Konami. Come on! Then we go into the Infinitrax because obviously we've got like um, uh, Anchor Drill does well in uh, Ancient Gears and obviously Box and Wyvern does good in it in Infinitrax so they sort of complement each other so they're right next to each other then straight after that we've got our Jinzo that's right your boy plays Jinzo <laughs> it's a bad deck but it's a fun one especially when your opponent doesn't know what the deck is like a lot of, lot of players know that there is a Jinzo deck but they don't know like cards like Lord of the Cosmos exists so when you say activate Laura Cosmos, I'm like, the fuck is that? What does it do? <laughs> so, yeah. And then obviously it uh, carries out to over here. And then we have our Gren Marju deck. Which is then immediately followed by Golden Castle Stromberg deck. Because obviously Golden Castle gets played in Gren Marju. Then we have Springen. Because after Springen goes Time Thief. One of my favourite decks of all time. I know I say this a lot, I've said this a few times in the video, but genuinely, the second I got a single copy of Redo, I fell in love with the deck. So I built it, I've got as close to max rarity as I can, the only thing I'm missing is the Starlight Perpetuas, and that's it. Um, so yeah, I, I love this deck. I, I just love this deck so much. Uh, and then we go into ABC, which is another deck I love, but apparently Konami does not feel the same way. Because holy shit, have I had a weird fucking roller coaster ride as an ABC player? Oh, we're going to we're going to hit A because of Firewall OTK FTK. Oh, that's kind of stupid. Okay, we hit Firewall, so you can have A back. Yay! Like one or two lists later, oh, we're going to hit this instead. Like they even hit Union Carrier. I know why they hit Union Carrier, but all they have to do. All they have to do, not to not kill us, because even though we still won't be able to make full use of Photon Orbital, if they give us a Union Carrier with the Errata, where it can only equip Union Monsters from the main deck, we could play the deck again. Because with like with, with that, we could go, okay, we can run, don't run the Photon Orbitals, but run like Triple Galaxy Soldier, and we can still play ahead, right? We just might not be able to make the Infinity at the same time as the ABC and the Appalooza. But now... We can't even make ABC every time because we don't have Union Carrier anymore. It's fucking bullshit. Run over that. I, I don't like it. I'm sorry. It's so dumb. Next, we have our Cosmo because Cosmo uses the Galaxy Soldier because most of Cosmo is light. And you can just discard one, get a Galaxy Soldier out, and then get a Slip Rider out even and go into uh, uh, Nova Infinity. So, yeah, Cosmo is quite nice. Obviously, you've got the secret rare Dark Ladies, not the Ultras, because I'm not a peasant. Um, then we go to Danger Dark World, which obviously isn't the FTK version because Firewall is back, but for Cybersis. But we do run the Danger Engine with it. And I have found out that with Danger Dark World, if you run the Codebreaker engine, you can make some really fucking strong boards. So that's actually a fun deck at the moment. I will I will attest. And after it we've got Adamantipator. Now, I don't have Researcher, but I have everything else. Um 
And after Adam Emancipator, we have Fossils, because I play Adam Emancipator Fossil, or Fossil Adam Emancipator, whichever way you want to put it. Because all rocks, Weathering Soldier searches out the Fossil Fusion, you can fuck your opponent's graveyard while also fucking them on the board, because Adam Emancipator makes some really strong boards on top of that, and it's just an all-round fuck you to the opponent. Then we have what I lovingly call uh, the Virus. I'm not going to say the actual virus name because I'm going to get my fucking YouTube video taken down. But it's named after the well-known one. It's it's named after the well-known one. Let's put it that way. Um, so obviously because you use the, vi the virus cards, you use the uh, Liliths and all that. I've noticed that we got reprints of Aruha and reprints of Lair, right? Even though Lair got reprinted in fucking Mago. So why didn't they keep Lair in Mago? And instead of reprinting it again in the structure decks, just reprint the Lilith. Fucking bonkers, I know, but they could have done that. And then that way, technically, because the fucking structure deck hasn't been in print for like five years, people can still build the deck. Because also Lilith's in like uh, Mystic Mindburn, so it would also allow them to have easier access. Can you guys reprint uh, the one and uh, the structure that yeah that's what i'm saying they reprinted a harima they reprinted lair but they didn't reprint lilith which is the more important card yeah they also reprinted this fucker the duke why reprint duke but not lilith <laughs> or or the darkest diablos because darkest diablos because the reason why this deck is next to um sacred beast is because in sacred beast you use darkest diablos so it is splashable, so why not reprint them? But you just go, oh yes, second reprint of Lair, and also Duke, which nobody in their right mind uses. Ha oh, great. Oh. Konami make me wonder, I swear. Now, so we've got Sacred Beast with everything Sacred Beast, including Rarity Bumps. I have the, I think it's uh, Duelist, what is it? Uh, yeah, Duelist Saga, Dark Summoning Beast, and Fallen Paradise. Because if you don't know, Duelist Saga's Ultras have like a weird like way of being printed compared to normal Ultras. And it just looks a lot nicer in person. Fuck, I love that rarity. To the point, I might get all of these Sacred Beasts in that rarity, because I'm pretty sure they were printed in the same set. Um, then obviously we've got a... Um, Plunder Patrol with Black Eye because Black Eye makes this deck actually really good. Like, really fucking good. Um, I used to run the Hulk combo in Black uh, in uh, Plunder Patrol, but now I'm running White Aura Whale, which actually kind of does the same job, if not the same job, but like, it has like a different engine that goes down, which makes it a bit better, actually. Because if you follow um, Distant Coder, I'll see you'll notice the mat and all that. But he actually has a Plunder Patrol build that is really good that doesn't even use Hulk because you're able to use stuff like White Aura Whale. Straight after this, we have close to max rarity uh, for Hire. All I need is Secret Rare Beats and uh, Secret Rare uh, Mayhems. That's it. Then straight after that is Monarchs. And this is the 68th deck that we've gone through. Because Monarchs is the last of this very last binder. Bear in mind, I don't count Codebreaker as a deck, but I do count Invoked as a deck. Because I'll see, you can run pure Invoked, but you cannot run pure uh, Codebreaker, because it's literally one main deck card. And like two extra deck cards, you can't run that pure. But you can run Danger pure, you can run Dark World pure, you can run... Uh, invoked pure so all of those do technically count as decks so that's why i'm at 68 and not like 65. And then for the finale oh we're at it we have the extra deck binder as you can tell it's a different color binder just so i can easily tell which like if one's a main deck and one's a extra deck one so we open it straight up, and as you can see, it's all fusion. So it's not alphabetical order in the same what sense you would think. This is, so the order of these cards go, fusion, link, synchro, XCs. Now that sounds weird until you take into account 
I build most of my decks through the uh, deck builder Yu-Gi-Oh!pedia on my phone because that's where I store most of my lists. Then because of that, when you go through the uh, deck part on the actual app, it uh, goes Fusion, Link, Synchro, Xyz as you go down. So that way, if I'm following the list on the phone, I go, okay, I'm on the Fusion section, open to this section. Okay, I'm going on Link, go a little further, I'm now in the Link section. Oh, Synchro, go a little further, Synchro section. Oh, Xyz, go a little further into the Xyz area. That's why I've built it that way. It, it doesn't make sense until you take that into account. So just take that into account. By the way, this is almost an hour long going through these. So there's a lot to go through. Because <laughs> this is another big meaty one. Because obviously we've got the fusions with stuff like our ABC. I'm going to not talk about uh, cards that go into decks themselves. So like, I'm not going to talk about ABC because we went through the ABC deck. I'm instead going to talk about generic cards that can go into multiple decks that aren't archetype specific. So there's nothing there, for example, but on this page, again, nothing. All of these are stuff, well actually no, Dragon Necro is a zombie card, so even though technically it's also not part of the zombie archetype, you know? So that's a generic you run. Um, if we go a bit further, there's no generics on this side because they're all stuff like Metal Foes and Bright Furs and whatnot, and then we've got our Invoke stuff. We've got Kaminari Attack for the um, Thunder Dragons. Uh, we go a bit further, Mars Heroes, Odd Eyes for the few, uh, Pendulums, because obviously, uh, like, even though I technically have a Pendulum deck, they aren't an Odd Eyes deck, so it's good to point out the Vortex there. We've also got Mud Dragon for Super Poly Target. Then we go a bit further, we've got the Predator Plants. We've got our Dragoon. And then we've got, obviously, like our Starving Venom, our Last Warrior. Uh, we've got obviously Vision Hero and that, even though technically it's part of the heroes, I still feel like I have to point out because it's not a hero per se in a sense. In the sense of like it's a Vision Hero rather than an Elemental Destiny or Evil, which is the ones I usually go for. Uh, we've got the Abyss Act, we've got the Alistair, that's obviously from Dex, from Dex, from Dex. Appalooza isn't a deck specific, but obviously I have like five copies of it because it's cheap as a go and it's uh rec like you use it in basically any link deck so if you're running a link deck you're probably running this we go a bit further there's the appliances there's the own mage artemis for the uh invocation core then we go get a bit further beat cop and the borals uh, again are just generic stuff that i run uh, we've got the cross sheet which is generic we have the cross rose dragon which is for uh guard dragon plays but obviously now that we're not playing guard dragon anymore it's pointless keeping this fucker around to be fair uh, then we go into the Hulk. Go a bit further. We've got Defender of the Labyrinth because if you run Scapegoat, it actually saves you room in the extra deck if you use one Defender of the Labyrinth or two of these and like one copy or two copies of like Link Rebo. That gets you into Brawl Load slash Brawl Sword in less spaces in your extra deck if you use um, Scapegoat. So that's why I do actually have a copy of this for that reason. Plus also, again, I'm running that Exodia Heart of the Underdog deck, so that actually works. We've got the Drag Unit in Romulus, because again, I ran Dragon Link, but now it's more of a Rocket deck. We've got the Firewall, because obviously, Salad. Then we've got the Goki. We've got the Five-Headed Dragon for the Punishments, the Dogmatica Punishments. Um, let's see, we go further, it's like the Guard Dragon stuff, including an Arga Pain. Obviously, since LP got banned, I'm less confident that we'll ever get this back. I wasn't very confident to begin with. But obviously I'll still keep it in here, just in the off chance that uh, Konami smokes like the biggest of the drugs because, let's be fair, they brought back Engage without limiting Kagari. Uh, obviously we've got the Heavy Metal Foes this, but we don't have Electromite because Electromite's expensive and let's be fair, they hate the Pendulum mechanic at this point. Uh, got the Herald of the Lights because even though technically it's part of Counter Fairy, I still count as more generic, like the High Speed Droid Rubber Band Fighter is also technically part of an archetype, but it's, I don't really run the archetype so much. Same with Heretic Sears, and also IP isn't uh, like in that sense, but also it is quite generic. Same with the Infinitrack uh, Fortress Megaclops. Uh, obviously we've got the Insector, I've got the Azold. I'm not running Noble Knights, but I am running the Azold because obviously I'm running Warrior decks. Uh, we've got all the Nightmares, obviously. Uh, except Mermaid, because again, I don't see that fucker ever coming back, because Orcus would just cream themselves. We've got the Link Spider, we've got the Link Karibo. 
Uh, again, more for like the scapegoat plays, but obviously Link Rebo is for any kind of deck, while Link Spider is more for the scapegoats because you wouldn't really run it in anything else. You've got the Marincess for the any water deck, so you can just keep reviving your waters. You've got stuff like um, uh, the Mecha Phantom Beast Link 3, which is obviously for any machine deck, so you can then uh, make use of Despot Zero to go into really big plays. Make Knight Avaram for that reason as well. Well, not for that exact reason, but you know what I mean? It's like one of those cards you would go into. Oh. Then we have um, the actual Mech Knight links. We have uh, uh, Neo Super Quantal Mech King, which is quite nice. And obviously all this. Uh, Platinum Gadget I've got a copy of for stuff like ABC. Because if we don't have Union Carrier, we might as well have the Platinum Gadget to try to go into stuff more often. Obviously the Verte for the um, uh, Red Eyes uh, Dark Dragoon. We've got uh, Relinquished Dynamo. Even though I've got a Relinquished Dag, again, you run it in other stuff like Cosmo. Because it's got level 1s and you could just steal an opponent's monster for the lols. The Salaman Great Core, including the Amrages, which go into multiple decks. Obviously, our Skull Dreads, our Secure Gardener, and our Selene. Uh, I've got a Samorg for uh, Ghost Reaper target, but also if I do end up building any kind of Winged Beast deck, I can go into the uh, Barrier Statue. Obviously, the Sky Striker shit, some Summoner, Summoner, because obviously you're going to be running it in, like, say, Thunder Dragon. Even though technically you don't need to anymore because of the new, uh, like, the new rules where you can summon a fusion anywhere it's still good to have that to yeet a thunder off the board that you don't want to keep on the board like say battery man solar uh, and then we've also got um our sun avalon shit uh again i don't have the newest support but i do have that we've got our super heavy samurai scarecrow arguably the best super heavy card to exist uh, and then we've got stuff like obviously the weather painter link uh the topologics uh the bardish uh, Trickstar stuff, even though, again, Trickstars are nowhere near good because we still have Light Stage at 1, Konami, what the fuck. Uh, triple Burst, the Unchanged shit. We got the Union Carrier in case it ever does come back. I'm hoping it does with an Arata, but we will see. Vampire Cycle for all that. Obviously, Zephra and Wee Witch are the only two generics at that point because Wee Witch for any Dark deck and, obviously, the Zephra for any Pendulum deck. Oh, I can help. Right, and then obviously we've got double dragite instead of the single dragite because you, even though you run it in the Adam Emancipator, but you also run it in any water deck that can make it because obviously then you have waters in the uh, graveyard to negate a spell at any time. So Plunder Patrol make good use of this. Uh, we go past this. There's not really much else to talk about at the moment. We've got the Beals stuff. So Beals and Bealsius. Bealsius is more like a binder filler at this point in time. So I don't ever really put in any deck, but it's good like as a generic uh, Synchro 10. But we also have Beals as a very good uh, Synchro 8 for like the fact that you can't get rid of the fucker. We've obviously got the Black Rose for Nuke. Huh? Uh, yeah, Beals is in Zombies, but you don't run Beals-Yus. Beals yes is like a weird Synchro 10 you never go into. Hmm. Then we've got the Borrowed Savage for obvious reasons. Desert Locust for the Hulk, if you ever want to go into that. We've got Ultimate Rare Doom Kaiser. I love my ulties, so I'm glad that zombies had so many ulties. I am hoping to rarely bump them. We've got stuff like Desert Locust, as I said. Uh, Crystal Wing, Crystal uh, Clear Wing instead. I'll see the Draco can be used in multiple things. Same with the uh, Dulorian and the um, uh, Gungnir. And Brionac, to be fair. Then obviously we've got the Hot Reds, we've got uh, Nat Beast and Nat uh, Dragon. Is it Dragon? No, Parkion, sorry. Uh, obviously the Metal Marcher for, again, everyone say it at the same time, Halky Firegrax. Um, we've also got the Herald of the Arc Light, so obviously Rituals love it, and there's a good way to abuse it there. Obviously, I do have the Aesir monsters in here, but I don't seem to use the Nordic deck. I more use them for like targets for punishment. Because obviously they've got very high attacks. Um, obviously the ulti revived King has theirs. Omega. Of course Omega. Uh, Stardust Dragon is technically generic. There's no Stardust deck that I own anyway. Uh, same with the Shooting Riser and the Stardust Charge Warrior. Although Shooting Riser is more, again, everyone at the same time. I'll keep on. Right. So, and then we've got the entire Super Heavy Core. Including ulti... Uh, uh, Susan No Rose, which I'm quite happy with. Uh, obviously, then we've got the four, and we've got the Trishula. Only a single copy of that, but to be fair, you don't need more than one at this point. Triple of the uh, other Trishula. We've got the Ultimaya to Zulkan, 
which is actually quite nice because obviously at any time I can just set a card if I can make this and then just go lol I now have fucking crystal wing um underground arachnid is the uh, uh insect that you're talking about that you could go into in spiders you should be able to go into it in spiders but you cannot because there's no tuners and if there is a tuner it's a really shit one uh, you've got Virgil, you've got White or a Whale, and you've got the Wind Witch. That's it for Synchros. We're in the home stretch, my boys. So, this is where most of the generics come from. So, you've got stuff like your Arc Rebellion isn't generic, but then you've got stuff like your Abyss Dweller, that's generic. Your bah Bahamut Shark, that's re uh, generic. Uh, your Beatrice, that's technically generic. You've got your um, Castells, your Comic King, Comic Hero King Arthurs, your CXE's Comic King, uh, King Arthurs. Your Cyber Dragon Novas and Infinities. You've got your um, Kaliugas, your Dantes, your Dark Rebellions, your Dark Requiems, your Zeus. You've got your fucking like, uh, Exiton Knights. So most of Xyz is generic um, as we go through it. Uh, we've got stuff like Ulti Exastag, Exa Beetle, which I got when it was at £7 a copy, not 25 because obviously everyone was going crazy on it because it could technically go into Buster Lock. Then you've got obviously your Jinzo Leia, Jokachi, uh, Kochi Dragons, which in my opinion is one of the funniest cards in the sheer fact of if you read its text, I'm not going to like read it to you, well, I'm not going to like show it up here so you can read it, it's, it's a bit small. But if I read it, I check any copy of Kachi Kochi from M A C R E N S E 1 that you have yourself, and it goes once per turn when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard. You can detach one XC's material from this card. It can, can make another attack in a row. Yes, it can do the can, can and then attack you again. Uh, that got pointed out to me by a friend who's actually collecting them. So I find it hilarious enough that I'm going to keep one of it at all times. No, it's not too bad. Then you've got the Valles, uh, you've got your Light uh, Dragon at Ignisters. Then we've got the number collection, which uh, I'm not going to lie to you, it's quite extensive. Because <laughs> again, they're just most, they're usually generic XEs, and if they're not generic, I technically still have the cards that you can use to make them. So, like, I've got the generic, like, number 20s, and then you've got the less generic Battling Boxer uh, Nova Kaiser. Sure, it's generic to make, but it's not generic to use. So, we do have generics, we have non generics. Um, but I tend to be able to use all of these. The only one I technically can't use, but also technically can, is um, if I go over here, uh, C15 Gimmick Puppet uh, uh, Giant, what the fuck is that? Giant Hunter? I don't fucking know what its name is. Uh, I'm trying to, re I'm reading it upside down. Uh, but uh, it's technically usable because you can bring it out with number 93. Number 93 summons it in defense, and then you uh, use a quick play rank up to go into Ultimate Falcon. Which, Kaji is the one that told me about that combo. It's actually quite funny. Um, so we go through this. We've got to see the C, X, Cs, and all that. Uh, and the numbers officially end here. So we've got one page, two page, three page, four page, at four pages, and three X, Cs. So four full pages and a uh, and three extra XEs of numbers alone. Um, then we've got uh, the odd eyes and all that. We've got the Paleozoic shit. Uh, we've got some generics here like the red eyes, uh, darkness, dark flare, metal dragon. But I made a mistake when I ordered this one. So I thought it would be. It's actually quite nice. I like you know when they gave out the ultra rares that had different colored texts. I like dark blue, it's one of my favourite colours, hence why all of my decks, main deck sleeves are actually dark blue. So I thought, ah, oh, uh, Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, I'd like that in a dark blue ultra. You can hardly see its fucking name! You have to put it in a particular light to see its fucking name. It's a good thing I know its name somewhat off by heart, because I used to play it a lot, but... Imagine saying to your friend, oh yeah, bring out that Red Eyes Xyz. What one's that? I can't remember the name, I would tell you it, but I can't fucking read it on my card. Uh, and also we've got not when you go to asphalt text cards where you actually it's just a fake language on the card. Oh yeah, fuck like that. Yeah, because you had like it's a really rare card. It's worth like five hundred for like Utopia with that Zexal language, and then it's like oh yes, you also have to have a version of it that uh, people can read. 
Then what's the point of me having the five hundred dollar copy? You know what's funny is it's actually getting a reprint. Like the Utopia version is being reprinted in the like the astral text is being reprinted in the Utopia structure, so that card's gonna lose a lot of its value. Which is hilarious, yeah. Uh, I do want the I do want the all art Utopia. That looks really fucking nice. But anyway. We've got the Sun and we've got the Spring Guns, we've got all of the Super Quants. Um, we've got, obviously, Supreme King Dragon uh, Dark Rebellion. Reason being is this card's actually good in Abyss Actors. If you can make it in Abyss Actors, it's actually quite good. So if you don't lock yourself into just um, uh, Abyss Actors and bring out like a sassy rookie and a wild cope or something, you can make this, and it's actually a good card. So I do have a playset for that reason. I'll see then we have our trains, we have the Phantom Knights. Uh, funnily enough, this is a funny story, I'm not going to say who I won against, but someone I duelled against had a Zeus, right? I forced them to use all of their materials when I was playing Paleo Frog, right? And they thought, okay, I still have a 3k defense, Paleo Frog can't get over that. I got two level twos out, and I brought out this Phantom Knight here. And because its effect is to change a monster's attack to zero, he didn't have it in defense, he had it in attack. Because it changes its attack to zero, I just went, lol, use uh, Phantom Knight attack over your fucking Zeus. <laughs> and I won the game because of it. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. It was, I, I, I was busting a gut. I love it. Then obviously we've got the Time Thieves. We've got the Toad. We've got the Tornado. We've got the True King. Rest in peace, but also rest in hell. You can't... <laughs> And then we're on to the last page of the entire binder, might I add. So I've almost filled this binder, which is the reason I'm making this video, is because I physically only have three slots left in this binder. And the last back page is literally just the entire Zodiac uh, extra deck engine. So, yeah. Uh, which, actually, I will say, I do have the uh, super rare Borbos, which is quite nice. Uh, but... I also have one broad ball. I want to get another two broad ball because then if it ever does come back, you know, to be fair, I might get two two more broad ball and get a uh, barrage. So then I've got a play set of every zoo card because then I could just say to someone, hey, do you, can I play a card without the ban list? Like play a deck without the, like, with like three cards that are banned back? Yes. Ooh, 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 I'm going to play full power zoo. Here's the thing about I think, um, I'm sorry. Let me read Broadball and you fucking say that again. No, no, no. They hit Dryden. No, no, no. Dryden isn't a fucking issue if Broadball's out. Listen. Once per turn, you can also exceed Broadball using one Zodiac. So basically any Zodiac white -like card anyway. This is two level four monsters. So this is generic like Shackenine is. Right, so you can use this in a non-Zodiac deck as well, if you so wish. Uh, any material comes its material. This card gates attack, da, 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 all Zodiac more stuff. Once per turn, you can detach a material to add one Beast Warrior type that can be normal summoned or set from your deck to your hand. I can add Whiptail, I can add Rapier, I can add any Beast Warrior in the entire game to my hand because I decided to go lull overlay. No, this card cannot come back, especially with how prevalent Beast Warriors are. Brawl Ball can never come back. It, one Brawl Ball, even without Dryden, would make Tri Brigade Zoo tier zero. I'm not even gonna. I, that, that's how I feel about that. That is such a dumb card. I don't see that ever coming back. They, they, they hurt my feelings getting rid of Dryden. Well, I didn't know Dryden was a woman. I didn't realize Dryden had to. I thought it was just a very masculine man. Yeah. So let me go back to talk to viewers. So, that was the binder. Reason I recorded this is because on stream, at least twice, maybe three times now, I have said that I've got 68 decks because it's not like a brag, it's just me saying, you know, I've got this many decks, there's only so many I can build, hence why, you know, some cards are sharing, some cards, so on and so forth. You know, it's not like a brag, it's more me just saying, you know, if it's for this reason, it's for that reason, you know. And I've had many people just go, no you don't, you're fucking bullshitting. This video is now something I will link every single time they say you're bullshitting. I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> so yeah, th this hour-long video, which I'm going to cut down because I'll see some burst through my door when I was uh, 
when I was doing it, and I feel like that was information that shouldn't be leaked, hence why this stream will probably be deleted after it's uh, done as well. Um, I will actually edit this down, I'll get some sort of editing program. But I hope you guys enjoyed this hour-long fucking crusade through my binders. That's how me that's, that, that's how long it takes. It's... Oh, it took me about three hours to unsleeve the six decks I had sleeved, just so I could, like, um, put them in the binders. So I could do this video. Yeah. So now, all I have to do is, uh, after I've uh, stopped recording, and either when I finish the stream or while the stream's still on, I just need to re-sleeve all six of them, which... To be fair, I've got the entire... I, I got the updated list of them on here, so I'll just uh, go on there, scrub the lists, and quickly sleeve them up again. So that way I've got the exact same decks I had before. The only thing that might be slightly different is my Phantom Knights, because I don't think I updated it recently. But I've got a good feel how the deck plays anyway, so I know sort of what I'm doing there. So, thank you for watching. I'm going to hit the end of the recording, and I need to edit this and then upload it. So this will probably go up uh, Friday or Saturday. So, hope you guys enjoyed. And if you do, I will leave a link to my Twitch channel in the description. Hope to see you there when I do next go live. Have a good one.